effort to unify England under a slightly odd new breed of patriotism revolving around sports ball, Black Lives Matter, Take a Knee and the LGBT movement kind of fell flat on its face. <laughs> Oh no, how awful. But don't fret, because the establishment had a backup plan. England didn't lose because Gareth Southgate made the bizarre decision to put the weight of the nation on the shoulders of a 19-year-old kid who had never taken a professional penalty before in his life. A choice which totally had nothing to do with sending a political message. No. England lost because of racism. Why? Well, they were playing a team of Italians that, wait for it, was full of Italians. The most striking aspect of Italy's 26-man squad before it took to the pitch was that, alone among the main contenders, it did not include a single player considered as being of colour. The sheer nerve of it. I mean, it's not like Italy is 92% white with a black population of just 1.5%, meaning that statistically you would only expect about 0.39 of their players to be black, and in reality there was one black player, meaning that black players were statistically overrepresented. No. Ghana's team is diverse, Nigeria's team is diverse, why not Italy's? Racism. You know who else is racist? England football fans. Marcus Rashford, Jaden Sancho, and Bukayo Saka were blasted with racist abuse online after the game. Police are tracking those abusive posts, trying to find the people responsible. And sure enough, within minutes of England's crushing defeat, the leftish Twitterati went to work. They urged fans not to be racist towards those players, all the while desperately looking for evidence that fans were doing precisely that. After all, this was too good an opportunity to miss for Twitter's virtue signalers, always keen to berate England as a nasty, bigoted backwater. They quickly found the instances of online racism that they were looking for. It didn't seem to matter that most of the tweets seemed to come from fake accounts recently activated and with low follow accounts. Nor did it matter that these accounts often originated overseas, often in countries with significantly more racist populations than England. Claiming to support England, but racially abusing them when they lose. These are 19 year old kids with the weight of a nation on their shoulders being abused by a bunch of fat, sweaty, racist yobs with the weight of 20 years of doner kebabs on their podgy man tits. Really, Jonathan? Careful now. Before you blame North FC, let's take a look at where the vast majority of these messages originally came from. Oh look! India, United Arab Emirates, Egypt, Iran, Saudi Arabia and Pakistan. A bunch of fat, sweaty, racist yobs. Mm, don't really sound like your typical gammon to me, Jonathan. To put the scale of the racist abuse the England players received on Twitter into context, The Guardian analysed more than 585,000 tweets aimed at the players during the group stages, and found 44 explicitly racist messages, 0.0075% of the total. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but that sounds like a completely contrived fake moral panic. When an idiot fan invades the pitch, the TV cameras quite rightly turn away to ensure he doesn't get the publicity he craves and to discourage others from doing the same. When a tiny number of idiots racially abuse players, we give them wall-to-wall -wall media coverage. Go figure. Pretty interesting, isn't it, how they want to feed the trolls. The Center for Identifying Digital Hate identified 105 Instagram accounts that directed racial abuse towards Rashford, Saka and Sancho. BBC News analyzed the location of these accounts. Of those, they could identify 59 outside the UK and just five within the UK. A previous analysis by the Premier League found that 70% of abusive messages aimed at players in the UK originated from outside the UK. But Twitter and Instagram have declined to discuss the location of those accounts they have banned. They don't want you to know the origin of the messages. Gee, I wonder why. Could it be, as the screenshots proved, that the vast majority of these messages were posted by dudes called Mohammed, Rashid and Khan. Racist yobs. Before it was ascertained who had actually sent the messages, gullible, useful idiots like this clown were pushing for the total abolition of online anonymity and forcing everyone to provide official identity documents before they can even open a social media account, thereby establishing another core plank of communist China's onerous draconian social credit score in the West, which just happens to have been a key goal of the deep state and globalist factions like the European Commission and the Bilderberg Group 
for over a decade. What a coincidence. The UK government has vowed to, quote, make an example of those who posted the racist insults. So because a bunch of fake bot accounts and Indians, Egyptians and Saudis from halfway across the world sent a bunch of racist messages to black England football players. That means I have to lose my right to privacy. That means I have to upload my private documents to be kept in the oh-so-safe hands of social media giants who are caught leaking them on a routine basis. How the fuck does that work? It works because the media and the left are totally reliant on pushing this completely false narrative that England is a deeply racist country. You wanna see real racism? Go to India, go to Egypt, go to Saudi Arabia, go to China. Because you know where racism is worse than anywhere else on the planet? non-white countries. But that doesn't fit the narrative that facilitates the further centralization of the state's monopoly on power. That doesn't fit the narrative that facilitates the mob's ideological purge of its adversaries. A mural of Marcus Rashford in Manchester was defaced. It wasn't defaced with racist graffiti. It was daubed with completely non-racial words expressing anger at Rashford for taking a shit penalty. But that didn't matter. Within hours, the place was turned into some kind of bizarre memorial, a deluge with Black Lives Matter and refugees welcome activists. Oh, but it's not political. It's not about Black Lives Matter. They literally wore shirts that said Black Lives Matter when Take a Knee first started in the UK. But it's not about Black Lives Matter. A group that literally calls for the end of the family, the destruction of the patriarchy and capitalism. Oh, but it's not about Marxism. Rumour has it that a 500-foot statue of Rashford is being erected in Trafalgar Square as we speak. And that everyone in the country will be mandated to clap for Rashford on a weekly basis. Racists who refuse to do so face having their bank accounts frozen, their passports seized, and their statehood revoked. No, that can't be true. They'd never do that, would they? And I've got a plan. The time has come to not only find these people, uh, not only to prosecute them for their lawless behaviour, but also basically to excommunicate them from our society. So forget about locking them up, forget about throwing away the key, forget about banning them from football stadiums, right? I've got a better idea. Instead, let's make it impossible for them to actually have a life. No bank account, no ability to travel, no passport, no benefits, nothing. Forget kick it out, let's kick them out. We don't need them, Britain doesn't need them. Adios, amigos. Really, Mike? So you want to treat racists worse than sex offenders, violent criminals, and even terrorists? One question, Mike. Who gets to decide who's a racist? And is it the same people who've repeatedly called you a racist? For example, when you kept tweeting out racist slurs against Irish people. Should we seize your bank account, passport, and citizenship, Mike? Adios! Amigos! Half of these people who jumped on the England football bandwagon spend the rest of their time hating on England as a country. English? Hmm, too nationalistic, too belligerent, parochial, xenophobic. Too white. Too white. The anti-racism movement thrives on generating manufactured racism. Without it, their lucrative funding base, their justification for seizing political and cultural power, their justification for existing at all, would disappear overnight. The entire narrative that hordes of white English fans were abusing black England football players was completely made up. It was invented out of whole cloth because they don't want us to rally around a unifying message of harmony and true tolerance. In the words of Bob Marley, they don't want to see us unite. They want us to cave, submit, and genuflect beneath a warped, mangled, phony version of patriotism that makes us ashamed of our history and who we are. They preach unity and tolerance while practicing discord and intolerance. The intolerant purge of anyone who dares challenge the mob think for themselves, and God forbid, express a different opinion. It's absolutely crucial for you to help me fight the war on free speech by supporting me via subscribe star, link in description, and also signing up for my free newsletter at summit.news forward slash newsletter.